Hi, this video is going to be about seven strategies for peer review. So the first thing people often ask when they learn about peer review is, why do we do it? Um, sometimes they feel like, if I'm just another student, how can I guide someone else? It'll be like the blind leading the blind. But actually, having a peer review can be super helpful. Think about rock climbing or other team sports that you do. Having someone else there to support you and guide you can be super helpful. And doing a peer review, when you're the person reviewing someone else, else's work, you're really like the person on the ground who can see things that the person who's trying to climb and, and really struggling to write and get something down on paper, maybe not, might, maybe not be able to see. And so you can really actually offer them a lot of insight. But how do you do this? Well, that's why you're watching this presentation, so that you can learn the seven strategies that will help. First strategy is to evaluate expectations. And what we mean by that is, like if you're rock climbing, you would like set out a route. If you're indoors, they have little colored tags, or if you're outdoors, you kind of map out a route on the, on the rocks. But if you're doing this with a writing assignment, you basically want to look at a couple things. Assignment descriptions, rubrics, and of course your class notes. And most of these things, other than your class notes, can be found on Canvas. And this can be really helpful because if you don't know what the teacher is looking for, if you don't have that clear route, um, you can actually give suggestions that aren't applicable or maybe aren't helpful. But if you know exactly what the expectations are, then you can really help someone to make sure that they're meeting them. Next is to build confidence. And there are three ways to do this. Or there are four ways to do this. First of all, be human first. If you're reading an essay about somebody's dad who just died of cancer, you're not going to start by jumping in and talking about grammar. First, you're just going to respond as a human being and say, wow, this was an incredibly powerful essay. That must have been a really hard experience to go through. And just be human. Then, of course, you can go into some of the positive things that are going on in the essay. Let them know what works. Share connections and be specific. Wow, when you really shared this one part or this one scene, oh, I could really see it. I really connected to that. And then also remember to sandwich. You're going to give them some negative feedback, but make sure that you surround that by positive feedback. Next, of course, is to focus on content. And basically, when you're focusing on content, you're going to be looking at their thesis, the flow of the paper, and the consistency within the paper. Um, in the Writing Center, we use a little triangle to help us to remember to put content first, and then look at organization, then sentences, and then grammar and mechanics are at the very bottom. Here we have a quick reminder to please resist the temptation to alter your peers' writing. It can be very tempting to change a few words here or there just because it sounds a little bit better, but remember that every writer has their own voice, and if you make changes like that, you're actually fundamentally changing what the author could be trying to say. So resist that tendency. Next is to be specific. If you're on a rock climbing wall and someone tells you to just reach out or move to the left, that can be pretty unclear. It'd be much more helpful for them to say, grab the pink foothold to the right, and then you'd know exactly what they were trying to get you to do. Same is true in writing. When you're giving feedback, don't just tell somebody, mm, this is unclear. Be sure to be specific and say something like, I'm not sure what you mean by they in this sentence. Who is they? Having, asking those kind of questions and pointing out those specific things really can help somebody know exactly what needs to be fixed and exactly what's not working. Now, as you're telling people what's not working, you need to be careful to be tactful. If somebody showed up to rock climbing like this in high heels and a mini dress, obviously they would not be prepared for rock climbing and some changes would need to be made. So I know what those changes are, but how do I get the person to do that without maybe hurting their feelings or making them feel like I don't respect them. Um, there's a couple things. First, start with I messages. I think, I feel, I wish. This all sounds much better than saying you, you need to, or you should. Starting with I makes it much less uh, aggressive or much less likely that the person will be defensive. Next, be sure to use do instead of don't. That doesn't mean you actually have to use the word do. But make sure you focus on what they should do instead of saying what not to do. So for example, use a semicolon instead of don't put a comma here. Or connect this to your thesis instead of this is a weak point. Next, if you really find that a writer is stuck, ask questions. For example, why did you, why did you choose this topic? Or who might agree or disagree most with this argument? 
Or what's the most interesting thing about sometimes if you can just get the other person talking that can help you to see what they're trying to say or it can even help them to realize what they really want to put in their paper. Last but not least, respect ownership. Remember that just like in rock climbing, the person on the ground doesn't get up and push the person up the mountain or try to climb for them. They let them do it. And as a peer, uh, you need to let the other person have that ownership. You need to let them decide. Remember that the author is the authority. And a peer is, is, a, is the person who gives perspective. The perspective is super important, but they're not the authority. Next, let them write. And what that means is when you're giving them feedback, instead of you writing that feedback on their paper, let them write it on their paper. That will help them to restate your feedback in their own words, which will mean they will probably understand it better if they go back and read it later. And it also means that they'll probably remember what they wrote because um, going through the process of writing helps you to get it to sink into your brain a little bit better. So finally, let's review what we've learned. The seven strategies for peer review success are evaluate expectations, build confidence, focus on content, be specific, be tactful, ask questions, and respect ownership. If we do all the seven of these things, we can ensure that others feel successful and confident in our writing, and we can know what to ask people for in our own writing. Now, if you'd like to have, so thank you for listening. If you'd like a few more resources on peer review, be sure to check out the USU Writing Center Tutor Handbook or watch this cool video where professionals, real doctors, lawyers, business people talk about how peer review works in their professional life. Thanks for listening. Hi, this video is all about the seven strategies for peer review. Um, there are many people who, when they first hear about peer review, they wonder, why do we do it? I mean, if we're just students, how can we possibly give good feedback to others? Isn't that just like the blind leading the blind? Well, actually, it's not. As a peer review, you can act like a rock climbing partner. You can help your partner to see things they wouldn't see otherwise and give them encouragement along the way. And so your support is actually very, very valuable. But how do you do it? Well, there are several ways, in fact, seven strategies that will help you to be really successful. First, evaluate expectations. What we mean by this is, like if you're going rock climbing, you either indoors or outdoors, first of all, you're gonna think about how am I gonna get to the top? You're gonna pick a route or decide how you're going to navigate those rocks. And in a lot of ways, when you begin a writing assignment or when you're helping someone with a writing assignment, you need to look at the route that they're supposed to be taking. And that means checking the assignment description, looking at rubrics and class notes. And a lot of these things are gonna be found on Canvas. So you definitely want to start by checking there. Next thing that you want to do is to build confidence. Rock climbing isn't easy and neither is writing. So first of all, be human first. When you read through an essay, if it's an essay about somebody's dad dying of cancer, you're not going to respond by jumping right into a discussion about grammar. You're going to be human first and say, wow, that must have been really hard, or just respond as a human. Then you want to let them know what's working. Be positive first and compliment them on their strengths. Be sure that you share connections and let them know, wow, this specific scene or this part when you were writing this, that really connected with me. And then finally, sandwich. You're going to point out some negative things, some things that aren't working, but make sure that you sandwich that with positive things. Next, focus on content. There are a couple things when you're focusing on content that you really want to keep in mind. You're going to be looking at their thesis, their flow, their consistency, and remember that content always comes first. Organization, sentences, grammar, mechanics are important too, but the content, the overall message they're trying to portray is what you want to focus on. Most importantly, you don't want to get nitpicky. You don't want to worry too much about word choice and change things around on the sentence level, because remember that Part of writing is voice, and you don't want to change the voice of the essay to your voice, because it's not your paper. Next, be specific. When you're giving feedback, while you don't want to be nitpicky, you do want to be clear. So just like if I was giving somebody guidelines for how to climb up a wall, I wouldn't just say, hey, move over there. I would say, no, put your hand on the left, put your hand to the left on that pink handhold or something like that. Um, in writing, too, I don't want to say, mm, this is unclear. I want to say something like, I'm not sure what you mean by they in this sentence. Who is they? 
being that specific really lets the writer know what's not working. Next, you want to be tactful. Of course you're going to let them know what's not working, but you want to do it in a way that they're actually going to be able to accept. If I went rock climbing and somebody was dressed like this in a mini skirt and high heels, I would have to make some changes. I would have to give them some advice. And I would have a lot of different advice to give them, but if I want to give that advice effectively, I need to use I messages. Instead of you should do this, I need to say stuff like I think, I feel, or I wish, and then finish the sentence that way. Also, it's best to focus on do's instead of don'ts. Tell them what they should do instead of what they shouldn't. For example, use a semicolon instead of don't put a comma here. Or connect this to your thesis instead of this is a weak point. That will help your partner to be a lot more receptive to your feedback. Next, of course, is to ask questions. Sometimes when you're working with somebody, they're just stuck. They don't know where to go next. They're having writer's block or something. And you can help them through that by asking questions like, why did you choose this topic? Who might agree or disagree most with this argument? What's the most interesting thing about? If you can get them talking, usually you can get them to work out what they really want to say in their paper. Last but not least, respect ownership. Remember that you need to let them decide. They're the author, so they have the authority. As a peer, you offer great perspective, but remember, they're the author. And let them write. This means instead of you writing on their paper, you should let them write on their paper. That way they can restate your feedback in their own words. And that means they're probably going to actually remember and use what you told them. So let's review. The stra seven strategies for success are evaluate expectations, build confidence, focus on content, be specific, be tactful, ask questions, and respect ownership. If you do all these things, I can guarantee that you're going to help other writers and yourself through the process of getting to the end of a writing assignment successfully. Now, if you're interested in a little bit more about strategies for peer review, you can check out the USU Writing Center Tutor Handbook, or you can check out this cool video which uh, is showing professionals talking about peer review, like doctors and textbook writers and even business people. You'd be surprised to know that everyone in every profession uses peer review. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.